They're out in Turkish. Do we have we have Turkish patch notes? Confirmation. Patch notes are out in Turkish. We got Yaman Notlari. Yaman Notlari. Okay. Draven. Play or strike. I've struck twice. Wait, I can read this. This is like English. Well, this is a crazy buff. This is an absolutely insane buff. All I have to do is use two spinning axes on a Draven. The turn after, right? The turn after. And that's it. Exactly. So basically, Draven's easier to level up. This is a big deal. This is a pretty big buff, actually. Draven's already a very powerful card. I've been running him in Spiders. I've been running him in like basically every Noxus deck. Uh, in you know, Ezreal. I've, I've been running. I've been running Draven in every Noxus deck. It's like Draven's nuts. You run him everywhere. He's crazy. Um, Fleeting Blades Edge in hand to level up. I've struck once when I level up. Recall me. So we already knew this. This was the leaked change. Basically. It's just the first time you play the unflipped Katarina, the first time you play the unflipped Katarina, um, you have the ability to create the Blade's Edge. So when you play her, you kind of get a package deal. It's kind of like a two for one. It's like when you see a store that's just really, really struggling to like, like get something off the shelf, they're like, hmm, they, they put up a deal, right? They put up a little, a little thing where it's like, buy one, get one free. Or with, with a one time purchase of this, in the next 24 hours you can then get you know so if you buy katarina you get you get a free a free complimentary blades edge right there and and katarina she's she's flying off the shelves now everyone's everyone's investing in katarina coin i i personally i mean i actually do think this change is pretty big unironically getting like a free thing is nice she was pretty close to playability already like very very close right okay yasuo gets four health still shit Okay, Ka Callista, uh, being able to get three allies die. Okay, so basically the idea here is the Callista, uh, they kept her new ability, but we do have the three plus allies die now. So you can trigger her off of stuff like Haunted Relic. She will see a bit more experimentation. I actually have lower expectations for Callista, new Callista than Katarina, I will say, would make the most sense. Um, but it's kind of about the same level of things, all things considered. I think she definitely will see experimentation. I've been kind of like slotting her into like some fearsome decks uh, for a little while and it was okay. And I actually, I can see out of the corner of my eye, I can see Laurent Duelist down here, which is actually pretty. Woo! Gook. His Gook went from three to four. Now, Gook either means attack or mana cost. And I assume this is a buff and not a nerf. So Gook, therefore, must mean attack. Woo! Dude, Laurent Duelist is actually a card that I was thinking. I was thinking Laurent Duelist was almost able to see play. I really do kind of like this card. I think it's actually kind of underrated. Like zero irony, this card is a bit underrated. You can use it with some sweet concepts like Cursed Keeper to get value out of it. It allows you to put Challenger on a quick attack unit, which is very powerful when you combine those two things. I mean, think about Trifarian Assessor Drummer, uh, or sorry, the uh, Drummer Glory Seeker combo, right? That's very, very common in Assessor decks. It's kind of the same thing. When you put Challenger on a Cursed Keeper, Undying, or a Quick Attack unit, or something else with some kind of like value, uh, like Death Rattle effect, you get a very, um, you get a nice combo. On top of that though, on top of that, you can just give it to, even without a combo, if you have a board in your Demacia, let's not kid ourselves, you'll have a board. If you have a board, you can give it to something that just has the right amount of attack. Like, and that's pretty nice. Like, you just choose which unit you just want to challenge. That's pretty flexible. I think this card might actually start seeing some slot-ins. Ah, who are we kidding? It's Demacia. They've got much better options. <laughs> um, I don't know. This, this is this is hard. It, it does feel like it does definitely help Demacia Shadow Isles decks. That's going to be the biggest tie-in. But, yeah, I mean, the more, like, it's really hard for Demacia to free up room. Like, they have really, really good cards. Um, Bannerman gets a minor nerf. Allegiance goes from grant all allies plus one to grant other allies plus one. This is actually, like, a notable nerf, for sure. This is a fairly big deal. This will reduce Bannerman's win rate by a couple percentage points. It's still going to be... Oh, oh, I can I can see. I can see. God, I have to uh, I have to get to it later. We're, we're on Bannerman now. Oh, okay. Um, Bannerman, it's going to be pretty good. It's going to be pretty good. Basically, we've got plus one, plus one to everything. Basically, how I would say this Bannerman nerf, it's going to impact a few things, right? Bannerman is going to still be the best Demacia deck. It's still going to be one of the best decks to climb with in general, but it will feel a tiny bit worse. 
I would expect this change to not make Bannerman not the best deck uh, for Demacia immediately. However, I do think that with Bannerman getting a bit of weakness, I expect that with the new set, there will be a lot more reason to get out of Bannerman with like new synergies and stuff like that, depending on like how you want that to go. Also, the Allegiance is losing like a tiny bit of value, which can incentivize, in theory, like a very slightly deeper splash. Um, okay, Blood for Blood's Beetle is going from three to two. And this is a spell, so I know exactly what Beetle is. Okay, so this is, uh, I think it's interesting. I will say it's going to have a really hard time changing very much. Um, the thing to understand about Blood for Blood is that this is a really, really bad card. Like... Uh, let's go ahead and switch to English right now. And because, of course, since I, I don't actually know how to switch to English, it's going to be like this is how we switch to English. This is a really, really, really bad card, right? It's hard to explain how bad this card is um, to the point where a one mana deduction won't really help it almost at all. But that is an almost, and we'll talk about that. So it's deal one damage to an allied follower. If it survives, create a copy of it in hand. So basically, this is a three mana draw card. The reason this is bad is because of what I just said. It's three mana draw a card. It has a minor amount of flexibility, but it's giving you the card plus three mana, right? It's important to look at cards like this. Like Entreat looks like a decent card. In reality, it can, com and can combo with Karma, but this is just kind of a bad card in general because it's two mana to get another card that you already have. Like you don't, like you're, you're just like, like when you entry into a good champion like Elise, it seems good until you realize you just played a four mana Elise. And the reason Elise is good is because she doesn't cost four mana, right? And a similar thing applies with Recall, which is a card that looks really good at first. I think this is like a common noob trap card. But when you think about it, when you save something, you're mostly accomplishing just playing a plus one mana version of that something, right? It's like somebody, somebody threatens my Fae Blade Twirler, so I recall it. And then I'll play another Fade Blade Twirler, and it'll be a three mana Fade Blade Twirler. Basically, that's basically what I just put in my deck. Um, now, in this case, that's actually fine because Blade Twirlers. This is a card you would play at three mana for sure, and it has synergy in this deck. That's fine, but you have to realize that's kind of what's happening. So now let's do let's do Blood for Blood. This is a plus three mana on a card, right? Straight up, you look at a card, you give it plus three mana. And then you play another copy of that at plus three mana. So whatever you're copying is costing you three more mana than it should be, which is crazy, crazy, crazy bad. Now, it's going to get worse because not only that, this is a very counterable effect. It's extremely counterable. It has a big downside. Losing one health is a downside. You can combo it with certain cards that turn that into a bit of an upside, but losing one health is a downside overall. Part of the reason for that is because let's say I have got a Crimson Disciple. I've got a Crimson Disciple, I want to Blood for Blood it. I'm like, okay, I've got a Disciple deck, I want more Disciples. Let me go ahead and Blood for Blood this Disciple, that will deal it one damage, triggering its effect, two health to opponent's Nexus, and I'll pay a five mana, I'll do a five mana Crimson Disciple from my hand. Basically, what's happening? First of all, five mana Disciple, of course, terrible. Not only that, but you realize that when you go into Blood for Blood Disciple, if your opponent does like a Mystic Shot, you feel like super incredibly bad because your disciple will then go to one health off the mystic shot and then the blood for blood will resolve killing your disciple and then doing nothing at all it's an incredibly counterable card and the only there's no reason to play it because it's plus three mana uh compared to whatever else could have been in your deck now there is potentially one exception um, which is cards that are tokens that are incredibly valuable that you cannot main deck and the best the best example of this is yeti right blood for blood has actually seen some experimentation in yeti decks and that the reason is when you use it on an enraged yeti you are getting in this case the new blood for blood that's two mana blood for blood instead of a three mana blood for blood you use it on an enraged yeti and you're kind of getting a three mana five five right because you're paying two and then you're, you know, you're, you're like doing the, uh, then you're playing the, the, paying the one on the Yeti. And because Yeti is pretty chunky, it's got five health. It's usually kind of hard to kill it and stop the blood for blood from happening. So if there's ever something for blood for blood in its new buffed form to see experimentation with, 
it's probably the Yeti package or something kind of similar. I will say it is not going to be very strong. Yeti is the only hope for this card. Kato the Arm. It's Can went from 3 to 4, and Can has to be health. We're actually learning Turkish on the fly. I've actually... So, Beetle is mana, Can is health, and Gook is attack. Okay. So, Kato the Arm. Uh, wow. That's a big one. I will say, Kato is one of the more underutilized cards in the game. I think it actually has had some some cool, so almost seeing some synergy points. And as we all know, the difference between three and four health is massive. You're outside of like, you know, get excited range. You're outside of grasp range. You're outside of like a lot of the Demacia challenge range. You might think Demacia challengers have two attack, but I mean, they're all attached to war chefs or bannermen. So they all have three attack. So Kato the arm is out is much more survivable. This is actually, uh, potentially a bit of a scary card. I think th this card will definitely see experimentation in major ways. Uh, now, I don't know if it'll necessarily hit, but this is suddenly one of the best supports in the game. It may be the second best support after Warchefs. To be honest, most supports are kind of weak to the point where I, I can't really recall a list of them off the top of my head. But this card actually looks very playable all of a sudden. I You wouldn't run this in something like Spiders. Um, and of course, you know, there's like Vlad Brown memes. If you're running like a Vlad Brown style deck with over the top slam dunk, you should probably be running Kato for sure in his new form. Okay, Avros and Trapper. Oh! Oh my god! Oh, it's happening! Oh, dude, what? It's Can and it's Gook are both three! What are they doing? Okay. Oh, dude, is this it? Is this the dawn of the Yeti deck? This is this is kind of crazy. Oh, I, 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 w I meant to scroll for Blood to Blood, but I couldn't recognize it because the Turkish have like a like a grape j jam version or something like that. Um, wow. Wow. Oh, dude, a 3-3-3. Three, three, three. That's so crazy, dude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to experiment with Yeti deck for sure. I think Yetis were already close. Now, one thing I will say is, like, this card is definitely running Yeti decks. I, I, I will say that this card, it's got a chance. I'll give it a chance. Okay. Starlet Seer. By the way, the way to play Yetis, don't do this thing with Von Yip. I see a lot of people do Von Yip Yetis. Stats have diminishing returns. The difference between 5 and 7 attack is almost nothing. You want to use Von Yip on smaller things like spiders. Von Yip is no good with Yetis. However... Yetis with like Trifarian Assessor style package, that's gonna be fucking hot. Starlet Seer, it's can goes from two to three, and can of course being health. So Starlet Seer is now a two, two, three. Whoa, 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 dude. This could actually this could actually be a card all of a sudden too. This could actually be a card all of a sudden. The translation sees it says Bukaza, period, Avros and Trapper. Now, I'm 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 gonna Rosetta Stone this. This has to be C. C Avros and Trapper, like because they're using the same logic. Uh so now we know what the Turkish word for C is. It's Bukaza, period. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Weirding Stones. Ah. Uh, does this actually make the card decent? Four can. Would you actually play Weirding Stones at four can? So, Weirding Stones is a bit of a weird card. For those of you guys who don't know the history, in the preview patches, it used to be ran as a two mana card. It was a two mana card for a while. It was a zero, four at two mana, or something like that. And they double nerfed it. They double nerfed it. Four is big. Four is big, but I'm not sure how big Weirding Stones is going to be overall, right? Because you mostly are not going to be able to block with it. And it is going to be a bit vulnerable. So it's kind of like a um, it's kind of like a catalyst of eons at this point, which is like it's a little harder to kill for sure. Oh, guys, guys, I see it too. I see it too, guys. Oh my god, my heart, my heart. Okay, I like this patch so far. I like a lot of these a lot of these buffs to these underplayed cards. This this is really fucking great. I you guys know if you watched my last patch notes. I was not really a, a fan of the last patch notes that much. I was like, I, I looked at it and I was like, wow, really? This, this, this could, this could actually, I could do some cool things with this. I could do some cool things with this. So Weirding Stones, that's a hard one. I'm not sure if it can be better than Catalyst of Eons yet. The biggest problem with this card is like, 
everything in the meta is running removal so if you value this card you can never block with it even against a small thing even like blocking a one one and saving yourself one nexus health um this is just like killable at four they would have to like send a lot into this to kill it i think it'll definitely see some experimentation but i'm not a big fan of like the idea of like ramp as an archetype either way so shady character gets some can now shady character is a card that when i first looked at when i first started playing this game I was thinking this card would actually be good. I was comparing it to Faceless Manipulator from Hearthstone, which is like a combo piece that costs five. I immediately realized two things. First of all, this could only this can only be used on followers. So you need to find a follower that you're basically buffing. Now this has some flexibility, you know. I mean, you do have the ability to just use it on a bigger mana thing. But the biggest problem with Shady Character is that it can die on the stack. Now what that means is that it's a play effect goes to the center and the opponent has a chance to interact with your 1-1 one, one unit before it actually copies anything, right? That's the problem with Shady Character. As 3 health unit, that means that the opponent does still have the ability to counter it, but they would have to trade 3 mana into it. Why this is important, why this is important, I will say, this card, it's not about, it's not about the reliability of this card going off per se that's not how you should look at about it. it's not really about the fact that this card just got more reliable it is more about the fact that the card forces a bigger answer like if for example i'm against shadow isles a very common matchup and they always run these cards instead of vile feasting it they have to grasp this like when this gets disrupted it doesn't necessarily feel bad that's important when I play this against Shadow Isles and they and they have to glimpse it, that feels good. Or sorry, not glimpse, grasp. When they have to grasp it to kill it, that feels pretty good. When I play this against P and Z and they have to use a get excited, when they don't have a discarded target in hand, when they just have to discard something they don't want to discard, that feels good. Like, and that's fine. So the fact that this card is A, a forces bigger removal and B is a little bit more reliable in that order, in that order, makes this actually a bit of a combo piece. Now, what I will say is we have to then ask ourselves, what kind of decks should be running Shady Character? You would want some followers that you would want to basically be able to clone up, like double up for value, right? And there's, there's a lot of different ways to approach that. It's not impossible to run it in an Ezreal deck. I know that sounds kind of trolly, but it also fulfills the ability to target an opponent's card if you target an opponent's follower um there's a lot of situations where you might want to do something like that copy cythria there's a lot of cases where you can copy cythria copy barkeep okay you're probably not going to want to do that but you know i mean i'm not <laughs> hey man no judge okay frenzied skitterer is going from three to two in its can which makes sense that's very common english versions out well but we you know we don't need to do an english version we're already fluent in turkish at this point guys this is fine so frenzied skitter it's can going from three to two i will say this is pretty similar to the bannerman nerf in that at the end of the day these are still good cards when a card goes from auto include to what i would call lesser auto include i see that personally not as a nerf to the card because a card's value is in its playability and pick rate but as a nerf to the deck and a deck's value is in its win rate right so like in reality it's like bannerman will still see it'll still hit all the demacia decks i believe um i don't think the reign of bannerman is over but the demacia deck itself will get a couple of percentage points probably like just two percent not too much off of its win rate which is gonna be nice i mean it's it, it's it's a little bit more in check uh not really a huge deal like you'll still see it a good amount but it makes it feel a bit better and frenzied skitterer is kind of the same way like in reality this is a card that i expect to still see a ton of play it might I could see maybe some like experimental minor cuts uh, down to like two of in some decks, but I mean, it's still a very good card, but it does, you will feel this at the same time, right? You will feel this. I think with these kinds of changes, there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of argument, which is like, I, I see a lot of people discussing these kinds of changes and it always goes in the form of, oh, this, oh, it won't change anything or, oh, it will be a pretty big deal. And in reality, I, I think that they're kind of saying the same thing and I think they're both right. Like, it's true that it won't change very much in terms of the deck building. Like, it'll still see play in pretty much all the same decks. 
but it's important to understand it will feel a lot worse. There's going to be plenty, really common spots, super common spots where you will, you will feel this lack of one HP in Skitterer for sure. And you'll still probably run it, but it will make your deck a bit worse, and that's fine, right? And then there's Goslem. So Ezreal and Karma are on the Goslem, which doesn't really surprise us that much. I don't remember the last Goslem. The last Goslem was, um, do they do they also have like a uh, Ezreal up there? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Uh, but I definitely there's too many different words that I can't that I can't make out here. So we're not. We're not too sure exa exactly why that is. Oh, and then there's... I'm not even going to try. Um, so, Bright Steel Formation. It's a very, very, very minor tweak. But basically, apparently how this works is that it no longer barriers something that's already barriered. Which means that your Shen and your Green Glade Caretaker won't get double procced off of this. Which is, uh, as far as I understand, the only change that's happening here. Swiftwing Lancer, but so for the record, that means it's not. It, it's it's basically just a, uh, a, a UI thing almost. Like it it's technically a quote unquote nerf to Caretaker and Shen. It doesn't really affect this card outside of those, as far as I understand it. Okay, Swiftwing Lancer. So this actually matters. It goes from create an elite in hand to create a random elite in hand. Oh no, wait, this doesn't matter. Never mind. I th I thought it was elite from any region. Um, yeah, it's just. It makes sense. This is just, they're keeping it consistent in the phrasing. It makes a lot more sense. I don't know. These are just wording changes. Yeah, maybe I was wrong about Bright Steel Formation. Uh, someone, someone was saying that the barrier change, there was a barrier change that did work in that way. But I think these are just clarity changes. And I think the Bright Steel Formation barrier is maybe getting no change at all. I'm not sure. But yeah, these are just like, you know, it says random here, which makes sense because it was, it was kind of weird it didn't say random here. Wait, that's not a clarity change. Did it actually go from a play to a summon? Does that matter? Does that matter? So, Trifari Necessor has a really powerful ability, and you do have the ability to reuse it now. However, it's pretty hard to actually use a summon ability. The difference between those is that summons work when they're played by other cards, and play abilities don't. Which makes sense. I mean, sure. Um, now, the only regions that can really abuse this are mostly Shadow Isles and maybe a bit of Ionia, right? Um, because Ionia has a lot of recalls and pull from decks and Shadow Isles has a lot of resummons, like special summons, I guess, basically. Um, which is interesting, but Trifarian Assessor doesn't really want to be ran in those decks, I think, right? I I don't think so. You can use Shady on Assessor. You know, it's kind of funny. You 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 might think that, but I actually I'm pretty sure not 100%, but I'm pretty sure that Transform doesn't does it even work on summon effects? I think it's not counted as a summon when it's just something that transformed into it. Um Chronicler of Rune. Yeah, Chronicler of Rune on this could be pretty big. The one problem is Shadow Isles doesn't really have a ton of 5 plus power cards, right? War Mothers War Mothers is kind of funny. Assessor does work on War Mothers now, although, of course, I might point out that that's really redundant. The problem with that is when you're in War Mothers, you're in a game state where you simply will never need, like, five attack or anything like that. Um, you're, you're never, you're gonna, never going to need those extra draws, so Assessor with War Mothers doesn't really make a lot of sense. War Mothers wants stall, and you get that with Shadow Isles, not Noxus. I think that as adorable as this is, it has a really hard time making a difference that it's a summon effect instead of a play effect. Um, I don't think it will matter. Like, the best decks to use Assessor with have been Freljord, either Ash or Yeti, and I don't think that's going to change. And that deck has no way, unless there's some card I'm forgetting, I think that that deck has no way to actually do a summon, right? So, ultimately, this could uh, change things in the future, but currently, I don't see a way for this to actually make a difference. It was always a summon, it was just wrong wording. Uh, interesting. Okay, that makes sense. Do you speak Turkish? Okay. Shark Chariot. When an ephemeral ally attacks and I'm dead, return me to play attacking. And now it is last breath. The next time an ephemeral ally attacks, revive me attacking. Is this mechanically the same concept or have the mechanics changed at all? I feel like that's different, right? Purify now works on it. Yeah, Purify, Purify can now counter Shark Chariot. Interestingly enough, Shark Chariot didn't get... Purify did nothing against Shark Chariot before. <clears throat> 
It did nothing against Arcturia before, and now it should, in theory, stop it from... It should, in theory, stop it from doing this. Now it's just one time. Well, it'll last breath over and over again, right? Iceborne works on sharks now? Is that true? I think Iceborne should work on sharks now, yeah. I will say, as pog as that may be, as excited as you may be to like draft up your homebrew shark chariot iceborne legacy fading memory splinter soul like quad shark sextuple shark six shark board deck i don't know if i can recommend that but yes you definitely do have the ability to iceborne legacy on a shark i'm gonna say like <laughs> i mean look listen i can't i can't physically stop you guys from playing certain decks all I can do is try to provide my my guidance, okay? And my guidance says, no, 